making your own compost is one of the most beneficial things that you can do and the good news is it's really really simple as you can see here I've got a full bag of compost I made at my allotments which I've bought here and I'm just about to go back and collect another similar amount so if you're not making your own compost so far and you want to know how to then in this video I'm going to share with you five benefits of making your own compost and I'm hoping by the end of the video if you haven't made your own compost before that you'll agree that it's so simple that you've just got to have a go I'll also share some links in the comments below to previous videos I've made showing you how to make compost. So let's pop over to the allotment and I'll show you where I made this wonderful compost. Now we've just arrived at the allotment and I've just opened up the compost bins for you where I actually made the compost. And as you can see I've got three bays. You don't need to have a setup as big as this. You can make compost as large or as small as you want. In my garden, I'm going to be having just a simple compost bin, which I will show you also in future videos. But if you've got a large allotment and you've got plenty of growing space, then you may decide to have something a little bit bigger like I've got here. The three bays idea is, is that you have one bay to put all of your waste in to start the compost, another bay to turn it over, and then you can have the third bay to create more compost. So you've got a continued rotation of compost. But don't be put off if you're a starter and you want to do it in very small amounts. The process of making compost is exactly the same whether you use a large setup like this or a smaller compost bin which I'm going to use in my garden. And there's nothing over complicated about using pallets to make compost bins. As long as you can attach the pallets together in some way, it could be just simply be angle brackets like I've used here very crudely screwed in. There's no levelling done with this. Or if you want to, you can just use string. As long as the pallets can stay together, that's all you actually need. So here's the compost I've made. And this is the compost I'll be taking back to my garden. It's around about 12 to 14 months since I started this pile and it's decomposed really nicely. Now some videos you watch will talk about various ratios of the types of things that you need to put in there and they'll refer to things like greens and browns. The greens will be things like grass clippings or the green leaves from the discarded vegetables that you're growing etc or just old plants. Browns will be things like cardboard and leaves from trees and things like that. Greens are enriched with nitrogen and the browns are enriched with carbon and some videos will talk about various ratios between the two. The reality is if you're making homemade compost for the first time I'd advise you not to worry too much about ratios. I certainly haven't. I've literally just been piling things in here as and when they become available and it's decomposed absolutely fine. But if you do want more information about what you can add to a compost heap I will put a link below to a video I previously made which talks in more detail about greens and browns and how to make compost. Now compost is a hummus or nutrient rich soil and all of the things I've just spoken about, nitrogen and carbon from your browns and your greens will all go in to the compost. Now when this compost is ready and you start to use it for your plants and maybe your seedlings if you sieve it, it's going to add all those nutrients back into those plants and that's what the plants need for their growth. And not only will the compost have carbon and nitrogen, it'll also have other nutrients as well such as phosphorus, potassium and other things that are really important for the growth of your plant and your vegetables. So it's a perfect nutrient rich material that you make for yourself that goes on to your plants. Also, when you apply compost to your plants and vegetables, it also helps to retain moisture, which is great for the plants and vegetables because that moisture is so important to help them develop and grow. So when you do water your plants, where you have got, say, for example, a mulch or a light covering of compost in or around them, that compost is going to hold that moisture for a certain time. Clearly, in warmer temperatures, it's going to dry out quicker, which is when you're going to need to water. But compost is a very good moisture-retentive material. And that'll help your plants and vegetables absorb moisture more efficiently. So the first benefit of making your own homemade compost is it adds nutrients to the soil and it's good for moisture retention. Another fantastic benefit for making your own homemade compost is it introduces valuable organisms into the soil. And the presence of microorganisms is important because they help to put air or air out the soil and that helps to speed up the composting process. Also, the compost heap will also encourage worms and other insects, which are absolutely fantastic for the compost and help to break it down and add nutrients. 
Another fantastic benefit is that you can recycle your kitchen waste. So all of those scraps from the vegetables, your peelings, eggshell, anything like that you would normally throw away, you can recycle those and put them into your compost. And that's one of the benefits I really love because it almost closes the cycle because you grow the vegetables yourself, you use them, and even the peelings are not wasted. They're going back into your compost heap, which create compost and nutrients for the next rounds of vegetables. So it's a complete closed cycle. So to me, that's one of my favorite benefits of making homemade compost, the ability just to be able to recycle and reuse all of the waste from your vegetables. Composting is also really good for the environment because of all those wonderful nutrients that you have in your homemade compost. You don't need to rely, therefore, on other supplements that you might need for your vegetables. Therefore, you're not going to rely on factory-made fertilizers or other products that might not be good for the environment. And of course, one of the biggest benefits, and some might argue the best benefit, is the fact that making your own homemade compost is completely free. It doesn't cost you a penny. All you're using is your discarded leaves and grass and clippings and waste, and just waiting for a period of time for them to decompose. So it doesn't cost you an absolute penny. Now that is a particular benefit, particularly those using the no-dig method of growing fruit and vegetables, which demands a certain amount of new compost every year. That could result in quite large cost savings. And actually, if you look around in the DIY stores and the garden centres, the cost of compost can be pretty expensive. And particularly as we move to peat-free compost in the UK from 2024, the cost of compost is only likely to go higher. So making your own homemade compost could potentially save you quite a lot of money. So I really hope this video has made you enthusiastic about making your homemade compost. As you can see, there are so many benefits to making your own compost. It's almost nonsensical not to do it and not to try. It doesn't matter whether you've got a very large vegetable plot or even a very small vegetable plot, you can make homemade compost in the quantities that suits you. Now I have put a few links to some videos in the comments below showing you how to make compost and what to put in it. So if you are making compost for the first time, that should really help. So make sure you check those videos out. Also, I'd like to hear in the comments below how you're getting on with making your own compost. Or if you've never made compost before and you have any questions, then please put them in the comments below and I will respond to all questions. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel for future videos on how to sow and grow fruit and veg and one or two recipe ideas, don't forget to press the subscribe button. And I'll see you all on the next video.